this time of year, it's unusual to see a whale. Usually right now, we see maybe dolphins. I don't know, I think she went back out to sea. I thought for a while I would become an architect because I'm very interested in space, which is why I make installation, because installation is all about moving through space. And perhaps that's more of what I was really interested in, is dealing with the complexities of our relationships to space. And a friend of mine had visited this temple in India. It is a temple to the Hindu monkey god, Hanuman. You know, I'm always looking for these kind of amazing coincidences between the animal and the human world, between animal culture and human culture. So I wanted to go film monkeys in the temple to a monkey god. I always have a vision or a, an image, like, like a photograph in my mind of what I'm gonna see. It's never there. But when I get there, what's really there is even better. So when I got there, I found out that the temple didn't have an interior. It's just a facade built on a cliff. And when I made the installation, one room is the temple, you walk through the doorway, and I made my own interior. And of course, what you find when you go in is an image of theater seats with a viewer sitting in it watching a movie of monkeys. So it's the theater, which is the sacred space. The viewer comes in, and you watch someone watch. I've always been incredibly influenced by Hollywood film. Ever since I was a child, I've been a sort of film fanatic. You know, I grew up wanting to be two things. I either wanted to be a movie star or I wanted to be an artist. And a really great way to become an artist is to go to graduate school and study art with real artists. I wanted to read a lot and I wanted to learn theory and I wanted to work in film and video. I had a friend who was an architect and he said all the best graduate schools are in Los Angeles. So I picked up and moved to California It's almost a tradition. Teachers teach, the students graduate, they go on to become artists and teachers themselves. So the relationship of this work to the work in the other galleries, can you talk about that for a minute? I mean, living in LA, you're surrounded by science, of mm -hmm. course. So it's certainly inspired a lot by that. And I think that's important to LA artists also is if you're always involved with young people, if you're always involved in teaching, you're always talking about new ideas. just building a tiny video wall. This is the installation at LACMA. Normally I install one piece at a time, but for something like this, it's really complicated. I need to be able to move around and look through every doorway. Like you have to get down here Look through this doorway to this doorway. So you can see that every view is planned. So 
that from any doorway you see another color and another image. When I first started working, I wanted to make something new. And I came to the idea that abstraction in art is the abstraction of the figurative. But abstraction in film and video is the abstraction of time. And that's how I came to working with images of the natural world, because the natural world is not inherently narrative. It's another kind of time, another kind of cycle. I'm interested in the relationship between images and space and time. When the viewer walks in, I want them to know that they're entering into a work of art. So how do I make you conscious of the space that surrounds you? I do that by tinting the space because that makes it a volume. And it makes you fully conscious of the space you occupy, uh, how you move through it, you see your shadow, you interfere with images, and the technology is exposed. So there's a kind of loss of self, but there's a kind of hyper-consciousness of self. And each of those spaces is sort of really choreographed to give you the opportunity to have a sympathetic bodily response to an experience. And that sympathy is not constructed intellectually or emotionally. It's seeing the dolphin spinning in space and feeling it fully within your body. I'm interested in you feeling the buzz and feeling that super fast flutter that bees do. The giving viewers an opportunity to feel their full self in the presence of other kinds of selves. Animals are quite foreign to me. I want to film them, but when I'm with them, I'm afraid of them. I think I'm a lot more of a city girl than I am anything else. People think I'm an adventurer just because I go to exotic places and film gorillas or dolphins. It's not because I'm an adventurer, it's because I have to. This is Kibu. Every day when I went up in this tower, Kibu would climb a tree opposite me and sit and watch me film every day. So I have tons of footage of Kibu sitting in this tree. And he's quite beautiful. Gorilla, Gorilla, Gorilla is a piece that I made in the Meifu National Park in Cameroon. The work focuses on Western lowland gorillas. The gorillas are in these huge enclosures surrounded by double electrified fences. It's to keep them safe. It's to keep humans from poaching them. They are so endangered. They are so vulnerable. But I found that documentary filmmakers who had come there before me had built these huge towers with ladders on them so that they could film the gorillas as if they were out in the wild. So I decided I would film them in three ways. Gorillas as explained to us by science. Gorillas as if they're free. And then the third, imprisoned, the way they really are.
It's really about questioning how we know animals. How is information about animals delivered to us? And it's delivered to us in these ways. This is an era in which the greatest changes that are happening to the Earth are man-made. There was this idea that animals were returning to Chernobyl, which is, of course, the largest nuclear meltdown in history. So I went to Chernobyl and I spent seven days living in a trailer with a very small crew. It's dangerous, it's radioactive. It's fascinating in so many ways. I used the abandoned movie theater as a movie theater, and I projected images of the outside on the interior of the movie theater. The one thing I never wanted was to reinforce the propaganda that animals are thriving in Chernobyl, which they're not. The whole point of the piece is the struggle, the will to live, and the struggle to live. I want us to find different ways to think through living and different ways to construct power. How do we think about the natural world in a way that doesn't destroy it? I think all artists want to change the world. I hope all artists want to change the world. And if there's any place that we can imagine a different world, it's through art, it's through literature, it's through film. I mean, I'm completely willing to say it, and maybe if I'm willing to say it, other artists will say it too, that, you know, come the revolution, I'm gonna be ready.